It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. President Trump has caused outrage for retweeting three anti-Muslim videos from the fringe British right-wing group Britain First. But instead of apologizing, the White House has defended Trump's tweets. Whether it's, it's a real video, the threat is real, and that is what the president is talking about. That's what the president is focused on, is dealing with those real threats. Uh, and those are real no matter how you look at it. So it doesn't matter if it's a fake paid. video. Uh, look, I'm not talking about the nature of the video. I think you're focusing on the wrong thing. The threat is real. I'm joined now by Ayman Ismail, video editor and producer at Slate. His current project is Who's Afraid of Ayman Ismail, a video series that explores Muslim identity and Islamophobia. And his latest piece for Slate is called How It Felt for American Muslims to Wake Up to Trump Retweeting Anti-Islam Fascists. Welcome, Ayman. Let's start with the title of your piece. How did it feel as an American Muslim to see Trump retweeting these tweets? Uh, thanks for having me. And in a nutshell, it just feels exhausting uh, to constantly having to feel like you need to separate yourself from terrorists. Uh, there's no doubt that a threat of uh, radicalism exists. Uh, but to constantly having them be conflated with Muslims as a whole is, uh, for lack of a better term, just exhausting. And uh, Trump has been very relentless about this. He's been doing this since 2011, when he was suggesting that Obama isn't even a legitimate president because he may have been a Muslim or because his dad was a Muslim. And we've seen it on the campaign trail where he was suggesting that uh, or one of the one of the people who was asking a question was asking what what, is, what was he going to do about uh, the Muslim problem in America, and he sort of laughed it off. And he was also quoted again about uh, uh, being asked if he thought Islam hated us, and he said, "Yeah, I think Islam hates us." So, as a Muslim person living in America, you you sort of anticipate this uh, language coming from the president, and the fact that he endorsed uh, a known minority fascist group from the UK uh, is all but expected. And it's just more of the, the same problem. Let's go to a clip of that British group. Uh, this is their leader issuing her thanks to President Trump, their deputy leader, I should say. Here she is. This is a message to the president of the United States, Donald Trump. I'd like to start by saying how delighted I am that as the leader of the free world, you took the time out to retweet three of my videos on Twitter today. So that was Jada Franson, uh, deputy leader of the group Britain First, uh, whose tweets Trump retweeted. Emma, can you talk about who this group is? I mean, she followed up her thanks to Trump by asking him for help in her case, where she's currently facing charges for inciting hatred against Muslims in the UK. Yeah, I first heard about this group maybe two years ago. Uh, they marched through a predominantly Muslim neighborhood in London, uh, brandishing these giant white crosses, uh, instigating confrontation. And then they edited it down into this highly sensationalized video, uh, trying to instigate some, some kind of clash of religions. And uh, it really sucks being a Muslim who wants to be part of the West, he spent his entire life living in the West, having to constantly be exposed to this kind of hatred and this kind of misguided anger towards, uh, you know, extremism, but targeted towards you as an individual. Uh, and I think what this group, the, their, their goal is very simple, and it's just to expose Islam for what it is, and they believe it to be uh, perfectly practiced by groups like ISIS. But for the this, the fact that ISIS is being fought by, on every side, by Muslims and being destroyed by Muslim armies, that's all the evidence you need that Islam is much more complicated than that. And that the war on terror, it has to involve Muslims. It can't be uh, the West versus Islam. Otherwise, you'll never, you're, it's never going to be resolved. Let's go through some of these clips that President Trump uh, co-signed with his tweets. Okay, so the first one is of um, uh, uh, some teenagers uh, seeming to uh, rough up another teenager. And it's billed in the video as a Muslim migrant in the Netherlands. 
Turns out, though, and the Dutch government told this to President Trump on Twitter, that actually the boy uh, who was said to be a Muslim migrant is not a Muslim migrant, but in fact Dutch. So essentially, they're showing a video here of teenagers being bullies, but implying somehow that that is a... Um, is emblematic uh, of a problem of Muslim youth attacking innocent uh, white uh, Dutch teenagers. Yeah, it's it's kind of sad. Uh, you know, this is not the first time that they've been caught fabricating what they'll call evidence uh, of some sort of Muslim barbarism. They've been caught taking footage of Pakistani Londoners celebrating a cricket match uh, and posting it with the caption, uh, look, these Muslims are celebrating terrorism in, in, you know, in the West. They've also uh, been caught taking footage of this mock slave auction to raise awareness about slave auctions in the Middle East. Uh, but they repurposed it and recaptioned it saying, hey, look, here's a real auction uh, that Muslims are having in the West. Uh, and it's really pathetic, you think, uh, to just having to keep constantly inventing uh, evidence to support your your hatred, and the only the only thing that makes it worse is that how many people believe it. Another video uh, shows a militant in Syria smashing up a statue of the Virgin Mary. Now it turns out that uh, this militant was uh, apparently a member of the group Jabhat al Nusra, which is the Al Qaeda affiliate in Syria, who later on joined the group ISIS. And, you know, I was thinking one irony there is that, you know, Jabhat al-Nusra actually is one of the militant groups in Syria that received indirectly U.S. support through their program of covert aid to Syrian militants. And so here is President Trump holding up someone uh, as an example of Muslim identity who actually the U.S. has indirectly supported and who has caused, is part of a group that has caused a lot of strife and bloodshed, primarily against Muslims. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really disgusting. And I think the biggest problem with that, uh, especially in the way that the video was presented, is that you, it, it feels impossible to think of anything other than some sort of clash of religions, you know? It looks like here's this Muslim who's declaring war against Christianity. So if I were a Christian who had no exposure to Islam, and I saw that, I'd feel this immense hostility coming from every Muslim. But uh, it's, it's really disheartening because at the same time, earlier this year, after Mosul was expelled, uh, after uh, ISIS was expelled from Mosul, it, there was this uh, huge effort by Muslims who were local to rebuild the churches that were destroyed by ISIS. So it's, it's really disheartening. And it almost feels like these kinds of videos are are working in favor of ISIS and groups like Jabhat al-Nusra by expanding their propaganda and presenting them as if they have the clout and uh, the representation of all of Islam within them. Like it's, it really works against Muslims and Islam as a whole uh, in their own war of ideas against groups like ISIS. And you know, you mentioned churches, so that reminds me of has President Trump retweeted videos of Dylan Roof, the white supremacist shooting up that church in South Carolina, or most recently of uh, that former U.S. soldier uh, shooting up the church in Texas and saying that this is somehow emblematic of a pathology with white people? Well, if he would, he would have to mention that there were good people on both sides. So, <laughs> Right, exactly. Right. As he did with the white supremacists in uh, Charlottesville. And I'm curious, seeing the reaction yesterday to Trump uh, retweeting uh, these posts from this anti-Muslim extremist group in Britain, do you think that the issue got sufficient attention and outrage? I mean, it became a major issue. Theresa May, the British prime minister, even weighed in. But at the same time, there was a lot of other news yesterday that seemed to overshadow it. I'm wondering if you felt as if it was handled properly by the media and public. Uh, I think the media can only do so much. I'm more so uh, still waiting on the GOP and members of Congress and everyone else in power with influence on Trump to really stand up for American values and stand up for us Americans who felt like we were negatively impacted by these retweets and uh, who now feel this anxiety 
uh, in a time where hate crimes have surpassed 2001 levels after 9-11. So I think, uh, I'm not so, I don't think if Anderson Cooper goes on TV and denounces Trump that that's going to make a huge difference. I think they did it enough. Uh, there's only so much you could do in a 24 hour news cycle. But I think uh, the government uh, has a much bigger responsibility uh, as, as far as coming out and condemning Trump for supporting a fringe group. We'll leave it there. Ayman Ismail, video editor and producer at Slate. His current project is called Who's Afraid of Ayman Ismail, a video series exploring Muslim identity and Islamophobia. His latest piece for Slate is called How It Felt for American Muslims to Wake Up to Trump Retweeting Anti-Islam Fascists. Ayman, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.